there Libra welcome to your January 2018 love reading it's Raina here uh, so I was going to like tell you a bunch of stuff <laughs> ahead of time and what I will say is that I have some more uh, videos that are connected to 2008 as a whole one will be a love reading on Vimeo and one is a general uh, tarot reading just for the whole year you can find the general tarot one on my channel when it becomes available. I'm kind of uh, doing some of these love readings first because of timing issues. And uh, and then I'll get to those. I've already done some of them. And yeah, so um, is that it? I think so. I don't think I need to say anything else. I feel like I do, though. But... We will just go on here. Wow, all this fire. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I've got these cards for you. And I've been getting these this vibe with January, even though all the planets are direct in January, that there still is unfinished business for some people. I, I think my last ring was Taurus, and it felt like that, and I feel like that with you too. Really do. Uh, that you may clear up at some point. We, we're not going to talk about all of these cards being exactly for the month of January, but kind of the themes involved. And uh, the overall theme is the Ten of Wands, which is a card of carrying a heavy burden. So, um, in some cases, this is somebody who... I, I do see I'm going to bring up this past position, because even though this is a love reading, there can be other factors that affect a person's relationship and you may have been very successful um, in your work life Libra you recently had Jupiter in your sign so that might have positively impacted your career and now you have a lot of responsibilities and so that may have created it, you know if you're in a relationship right now that may have created problems where you're not there. You're physically not there, and the other person feels your absence. And you feel like you're trying to do it all. You're trying to make everybody happy. Well, you know, that's the story of Libra's life. Wanting to make everybody happy. It does not work. It doesn't work. Somebody's always going to feel like they're not getting their needs met, and you have to be okay with that. Unless it's like your child. And even with a child, you can't always make them happy. It's not your job anyway. But if you feel that you are so um, overworked that you don't even have time with your child or children, yeah, because they're growing up, that might be something special. With an adult, they can handle it if it's in the short term. If this is going to be the new normal, then it could put a stress on your personal life. You can't have, you know, they say you can have it all. How can you have it all? There's only so many hours in a day. So when people say you can have it all, they're saying that everything is half-assed. <laughs> and then you can have it all. But it's it could lead to relationships that are suffering, whether it's parent and child or uh, two partners. The other thing is, this is kind of interesting, and this may have nothing to do with um, you being in a current relationship. We have the Knight of Wands. This could be somebody younger than you. So if you're a woman uh, who is over, let's say, 50, you might be a cougar. This, <laughs> this could be like a... a uh, you know, a guy who's like 40 or younger, and this is like kind of a stud kind of a guy. 
you know, kind of a player. Um, I was just thinking of this video that I, I saw on YouTube. It was really funny about um, this woman talking about the tips for cougars and all this stuff. It was pretty funny. But the thing is that if this could be a workplace situation where this young, hot guy in your office and you're having a thing with them because you're working so much that you are thrown together with this person all the time. Now, I'm making light of it, but if it's affecting a marriage, that's not funny. Or if it's something where eventually you play with fire, you get burned. Okay, uh, this person, you may go into it thinking, yeah, we're just having fun and you you start to develop feelings for this person and then it creates a dilemma problems all that stuff and you're working together so I'm thinking that for some people that could be um, the theme of that in some way could be fi figuring into things and uh, so I'm just gonna just keep going we have more of this same energy that's represented by a male who is under the age of 40 but not a teenager okay I don't think I don't think maybe in the late teens but I usually think of this man in his 20s to you know late 30s so I don't know if that's entirely correct but um, this night is very sarcastic can be very intelligent in a in a in a kind of blunt, no nonsense way. Uh, this is connected to legal professions, so it could be consulting a lawyer, but it can also be somebody who is um, dealing with a person who is a lawyer. Just I mean that's their profession, but you're not trying to gain legal advice from them this is your your love interest or sexual interest whatever you want to call it because I'm getting both of these nights now this is in the higher perspective so this is a spiritual uh, card placement so what could this mean in the spiritual placement you know this could even be a facet of yourself that is not being activated okay you are swords by the way because you're an air sign Libra so you are this sort of person uh, the only thing if you're a woman you might say oh, yeah but I'm not a man but this is we have to go beyond gender with general readings and I would say that the male quality that is connected to this card is talking about being assertive when people are assertive, they're standing up for their rights. They're not being weenies and kind of um, be playing the victim, okay? So it is very important for you with this card that, it, you know, if this applies to you and you need to grow a backbone, that you do. And it really isn't about being... Um, you know, pushy or abrasive. It's actually about, you know, stating things as they really are, not hemming and hawing, uh, be, you know, being around the bush, that, side, that type of thing. Libra is like so, I was going to say so famous for that, but it's really like Librans do not like to sometimes uh, state things very plainly because they they want to try to soften the blow or just prevent the other person from either getting offended or getting angry and with those cards on top if you are in a marriage a relationship where you feel like you are carrying the burden for the relationship that the other person is really not. Now, the Six of Wands, that might be the other person. It could be just like a fire sign individual. And fire signs, hey, I'm one. I'm a Sagittarius. We tend to be self-centered and, uh, you know, taken to the extreme. We're talking about a narcissistic personality. 
if you're involved with somebody like that, they may sucker you into believing that it's all your fault that the relationship is going south, and that's what the Ten of Wands could represent. That you're trying to, you know, keep this thing alive, and this other person is acting like it's your responsibility, you caused it, you broke it, you fix it. And that is all done to keep you in that defensive posture. It's not true. It's not what's really happening. So it's very important not to take what somebody else is trying to put on you in if you feel that it doesn't belong to you. Because the fire element represented by that wands is a creative force. And this is why it's connected to both well, you know, creativity, but also your own business that you create from scratch. That's a, a, a creative element too, as well as passion. So sexual attraction is also connected to this fire element. That's why I say like a spark, you know, because we think of that. We, we use words like fiery, a fiery affair, um, because that heat that is generated, but that heat may be kind of on the surface where the relationship itself is propped up by that, but it doesn't really have a depth to it where there is emotional bonding, whether there's intellectual interests and things like that, which is another big important thing for you. It can be that there may be some kind of an air sign the, the, the spiritual position may be suggesting that there is an, a fellow air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, who is really the person for you. He may be hanging around the scene, but not necessarily somebody you see in a romantic way. And this card would be saying, this is the person that you need to like look at, take another look at this person. What crosses you is represented by the Page of Pentacles. There could have been some kind of snafu during the Mercury retrograde that kept some kind of communication, uh, phone call from coming through. Maybe somebody didn't have your number and they were trying to contact you. And because this is Pentacles, this can be a somebody who wants to actually see you in person and meet up with you again. And they're not going to probably be content to just talk on the phone. And yet the, the timing was off for some reason, maybe because of Mercury retrograde. People are traveling, you may have been traveling and you didn't have the wherewithal to deal with it. You may not have gotten the message. Um, you, th This person may have old old contact information from you. And so there's like this thing that is lost in the shuffle. What I would say is wait until sometime in January. I don't have the exact date when Mercury goes back into the same degree that it was in when it went uh, retrograde. Um, I don't remember. I think it was 28 degrees of Sagittarius, but I'm not really sure. So sometime in probably January, maybe even early January, um, you will see this same degree, Mercury inhabiting that same degree again. And that might be a time when you hear from that person or you're able to take action that is related to something. Maybe you've been trying to hear back from a new job. If you're involved with somebody in your office, you may be saying that the only thing I can do is to leave this situation. It's a toxic situation for some reason. And so you're like waiting for that phone call and maybe it's been delayed, but it will come. Um, it looks like it might come after all, but just maybe in January sometime. The advice or what is coming in is represented by the Four of Swords. This is a card of renewal, rest, rejuvenation. Something has made you need to go apart from others. 
And maybe you're doing that soul searching, but it's also a card of even physical recovery. So you may have been, you know, as this card represents the Ten of Wands, you may have been like burning the candle at both ends. Perhaps it was for the holiday season. You were trying to get out your product and it caused you to have to work long hours. And maybe now that this, the, the holidays are over, you're able to get away for a vacation. But this is not a some type of a vacation that, that is typical where you're just doing a lot of sightseeing and, and stuff. This is more of a passive situation where you're resting maybe if it is in an actual location it could be at a retreat center a yoga retreat in bali in costa rica somewhere in mexico somewhere where they have these resorts and you can just feed your spirit but also rest your body could be something like that but someplace where you don't have to be doing a lot of talking because you're, you know, even though you are Libra, a very uh, gregarious type of an individual, you may be pretty um, quiet right now or, or feel the need to be, feel the need to totally recharge your batteries, including not speaking unless absolutely necessary and the outcome is the nine of pentacles so if you are someone who has decided to um, seek the counsel of a lawyer the nine of pentacles is about having um, a lot of financial wherewithal to live on your own and to start a new life and so there's no problem with it that way. And whether you're a man or a woman, you may, f you know, sometimes people will not get divorced because of that. They, they're afraid of losing everything. This, that's not in your case. Um, you would be well provided for. Whether it was your money, whether it was your ex's money, the other thing, too, is that the Nine of Pentacles can be uh, talking about the person. See, I said the Page of Pentacles. That could be a person who is trying to get a hold of you or meet you uh, as Mercury retrogrades tend to bring people from the past. So it might be somebody you've already dealt with. Uh, I'm thinking it would be a Capricorn just because you're both cardinal signs, but the other Earth signs are Virgo the sign right next to you, and Taurus. And that could be like you ending up with this type of earthy person. Might not be their sun sign, but you definitely get a feeling when you're with that person that they are very grounded. That they are very, you know, it's so funny. I was just thinking to myself, you see, see how we fire signs are? We're just totally self-absorbed. But uh, that's, I'm, I'm trying to, I always use myself as an example, not because I'm a complete narcissist who loves to talk about myself night and day. But it's, it's interesting because I have a lot of earth in some of my personal planets. And even like my, like my or I should say personal points, my moon is in uh, Virgo. And I even have Mars in Capricorn and uh, Taurus rising. Okay, so I have a lot of that. And yet, and, and I've even had people who, who know me or who have, you know, talked to me and they think I'm really chill and blah, blah, blah. And really, I am quite high strung. <laughs> That's the funny thing about it. But the rising sign really gives you away and gives that first impression. You're, you may not be phony, but it, it is a part of you, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. And so it can be that this person that you end up with is a fire sign you know there's so much fire around you you know or maybe an, a fellow air sign but they have that earthy quality and that is something that um, stands out about them to you and with the page of pentacles you may eventually have that new relationship the page the page can be about newness and 
end up with them happily ever after. You never know, depending on who they are. But it it's like there's something else going on here because like it, like if you're having an affair with somebody at work, you may need to leave. Um, it just may get to a pl place where it's uncomfortable to be there. And you may decide that it's risky even. And it's risking your your actual job and you just don't, it's not worth it anymore. But some people may be sucked into it and feel like they're hoping it's going to lead to a romantic relationship. The King of Wands is somebody who is very, has a very difficult time settling down. They, they love that adventure that is provided by just um, kind of sowing their oats for lack of a better term. And this is actually connected to Sagittarius, by the way, of all the three fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag, it's Sag that it's particularly connected to. I always made a connection to Aries, which is your opposite sign, by the way. So um, that person may be very dynamic, but not necessarily dependable or willing to commit. So there you have it, Libra. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please visit me at rainandmoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.